So the next one we're going to take a look at um, has to do with tides. Um, one thing you want to be careful of in tides is typically the um, time is given in a.m. and p.m., which may or may not make sense uh, as to what amount of time has elapsed. So for example, in this one it says the maximum depth is at 7 a.m. and the minimum depth occurs at 1.30 p.m. So see what you can do to come up with those four pieces that will give you your model. So four pieces again are amplitude, center line, phase shift, and uh, period. So there's the first three pieces. It takes six and a half hours for it to get to um, high tide to low tide. That's half of the period. So that way we can figure out the total period is 13 hours. The amplitude of the graph is 5 and the center line is 10. So if you look at the information we've been given, here's my little sketch of what this model would look like. What graph does that most look like? It looks a lot like a cosine graph. Okay? This cosine graph does not start at time equal to zero. The time equals 7 a.m. here. So that means this is a cosine graph which starts at 7, 7 to the right. So I don't even need my graph to see that. I can see from my sketch that it's going to start um, as a cosine graph, and it tells me in the question it hits that maximum at 7 a.m. So the shift here would be 7 to the right if I use the cosine. Okay, so here's one model, and again, there are many, but this is probably the one that uh, I would expect most people would come up with. Um, 2 pi over 13. It starts at 7 a.m., so I have to shift it, and the center line is 10. Okay, so from that information, we can figure out the depth of the water at um, 11 a.m. So we just need to uh, add this into the graphing calculator using our model. So 5 cosine 2 pi over 13 times 11 minus 7 plus 10. So according to this model, the depth is about 8.23 meters at 11 o'clock in the morning. So here's a question that says, uh, a cargo ship's hull needs eight meters of water to float, so how long could it be in port in order to unload its cargo? So let me paint you a picture of what this looks like, and again, you should try following it, uh, following it up with your TI-83. This graph has a period of 13 hours, so, you know, 20 is going to show me more than one cycle, right? But I'll, I'll, I'll stop it there, 0 to 20. The bottom to top, the tide is lowest at 5 meters. So even if I was to call this like 3 and call this um, 18, that's still going to show me the 5 to 15, the minimum to maximum. So that would be a pretty decent range to talk about this graph. The model that we talked about was y equals 5 cosine... 2 pi over 13 times x minus 7 plus 10. So there is the tide rising and falling, where its highest depth is at 7 a.m. Okay. And it says that the boat needs 8 meters of water. So there's the boat. Okay. So what you can see in the picture is it's safe for the boat as long as it's anywhere over here where the water is deeper than 8 meters. So all the way through here 
and over to the other side. Oops. Um, all the way to the other side here. That's a safe time for the boat to be in, in uh, port unloading its cargo. So to figure out how much time it has, we basically need to know what time is it here and what time is it over there. So that's what I'd like you to figure out is what times does the tide hit 8 meters so that we can figure out how much time there is in between. Okay, so um, one intersection that you will get is this first place over here is about 11.1. .1. Okay, so one time is at 11.1 uh, .1 hours. The other time over here, um, I believe that was at uh, 2.9. Was that? We just rounded it to one decimal. I believe it's 2.9. So anywhere in between, that ship can be in port. So that means the total amount of time it's got to be uh, finished within 8.2 hours in order to get out of the port in time. So it looks like we're going to run out of time before we're able to do the last question about how the ant has long the ant has to hold their breath. But uh, anyways, we'll deal with that if there's questions uh, next day. Okay, I'm just going to finish this question off that we didn't have time to get to in class. Um, so those of you on YouTube, you can see how the ant uh, needs to hold their breath. Um, let's start with a good picture. So here's my tire. And it says the tire is a half meter tall. So if that's 0 0.5 meters, then I can work out that this is a 0.25 meter radius. And of course, it touches the ground here at 0 meters. Now, it tells me that the creek that we drive through is 0.3 meters deep. So there's sort of what the creek would look like. And um, I'm told that it takes 0 0.5 seconds for the, the wheel to rotate. So then I should recognize that as being the period and um, let's see here so I can see um, my maximum and my minimum in this picture so I can come up with an amplitude which is going to be 0 0.25 halfway between um, oops sorry let me undo that for a second um, this line here would be 0 0.25 right at the middle of the wheel. So that means I had to go up by 0 0.25. Um, I guess at that point it's going from the center line down and the center line up so I can see the amplitude. Um, I can also see the center line is the same. And all that's left is for me to figure out the phase shift. So I can choose, um, basically I want to know how long it does it take for the ant to go around this part of the wheel. Okay, so it doesn't matter which graph I pick, it's going to have the same amount of time no matter which uh, phase shift I choose. So if we pick something convenient, uh, we've been doing this quite a bit where we say we start at the bottom. So why don't we say that that's where the ant is at time zero. So the ant is being squished right at the beginning at time equals to zero. Um, if it starts at the bottom, then this is roughly what it's going to look like as it goes through the wheel. So here's the ant starting, and here's the ant you know, coming out of the water, and catching its breath, then holding its breath. So um, if we did that, that looks a lot like a negative coast graph, and I don't need to work with a phase shift. So I can come up with a model graph, which is negative 0.25 cosine 2 pi over a half plus 0 0.25. So let's take a look at what this picture might look like. Uh, you can of course use your TI-83, but I've got it set up in my software here. So uh, here's the picture of the wheel rolling and the blue line represents the water. So anytime that the red line goes below the blue line, that means the ant has to hold their breath. So for example, right here, starts holding its breath and then can catch its breath here. So um, we need to know what time this was 
And to do that, I'll have to calculate an intersection. So again, if you're using your TI-83, you're going to have to go to second function, calculate, and use the intersect method. And um, we've reviewed that already, so I'll just do it here so you can see the position. Um, it looks like 0.359 would be that first intersection, and 0.641 would be the second. So the ant has started its uh, descent, say it was here. Um, if we went um, one of the times it crosses and then comes around to here, this would be the time 0 0.39. Just double check the numbers. I think, uh, I think it was 359. So 359. And this was 0 0.641. And I'll just double check and we'll figure out what the total time then that was passed. Okay, so it looks like if they were to hold their breath, a total of 0 0.282 seconds would have elapsed. And the ant would have to hold their breath for 0 0.282 seconds. I have no idea if that's a long time or not for an ant, but hopefully they, uh, they survived.